Hey guys, it's Austin Lapree here from 258 Gaming. Just wanted to welcome you to our next series of Let's Play videos. Today we will be playing Anodyne. This game came out a few weeks ago, maybe a little bit over a month ago, in one of the Humble Bundle retro packs, along with several other fantastic games, which I'm sure we will be playing in the near future. I took a uh, great liking to this game. I found that the music was good, uh, the puzzles were fantastic, just the overall story was pretty entertaining. Um, this is a modern retro 8-bit game, uh, came out not too long ago, uh, so it's funny to see a game like this reference things such as like Facebook, Twitter, uh, within commentary of characters. I found that personally amusing, and I'm hoping uh, you guys will have some uh, good laughs and some good moments from this game as well, and then hopefully maybe you'll go get it yourself. Uh, without further ado, uh, other than that, let's begin. Alright, and we will be starting a new game. Am I sure? Yes, of course I am sure. Yeah. Alright. And there I am. So, uh, obviously it's just using arrow keys, it's not WASD, uh, which is kind of something I would prefer, but it is something that you get used to, so it's not too difficult. And so right away, basically, this whole beginning part, obviously, they're just teaching you the controls, how to uh, navigate the game, things like that. Alright, so here's the menu. Uh, it's pretty simple, obviously. Um, C is to select anything rather than enter. Uh, as you can see, basically, it's kind of straightforward. We have our map, which won't show up until we actually get into the actual game. Any items we collect, such as keys, weapons, uh, things of that nature. Cards are what you collect throughout the game to open other gates, which you'll find out pretty soon. Obviously, you have different saves, death counts. Not that the death count actually matters, I guess it's just to you know, see how far you can get without dying as, or with dying as little as possible. And then, of course, we have different configurations, such as um, scaling. I have it scaled up, so it's full screen here. Um, it's kind of also just the um, default settings. So uh, that's basically the menu for you. Uh, we can get into stuff within this menu a little bit farther, but basically we'll just keep jumping right into things. So we see an object, so we approach it. Let's press C and interact. Alright, so that thing just had like two different things. So yeah, you can press different people, uh, items, like such as those rocks that have messages on them, will say different things every time you click on them. Uh, here comes our seer or something, I believe. Let's see. Sage, right. Wow, so surprising. A video game's plot where there is an evil power at play and it's our job to stop it and we're going to have to do a series of challenges and tasks to succeed. Although the story necessarily isn't strong, the, uh, the puzzles and the things, uh, obviously because this is an action puzzle game, uh, those become fun and that's really what carries you through the game. It's not necessarily uh, that the story is extremely strong and that there's a lot of side stories and character arcs, but... Uh, I mean, it's it's a good game all around so far. Basically, figuring out the puzzles, getting things, that's fun. Plus, it's 8-bit and retro. Who doesn't like that? Uh, probably a lot of people, but whatever. Hmm. 
And see, this is what happens when you repeatedly talk to somebody multiple times. They always say something different. Okay. And then, of course, this is our save uh, box that we can go on anytime uh, by pressing C. It, you see them throughout the game, obviously before something difficult or a new level, things like that. Pretty straightforward. And that's that. So let's begin by going through the first portal. So now we're already in our first level, so we'll save. I played this game a slight bit um, I, for a few hours uh, to get the hang of it. I haven't beaten it yet, but um, so I, I do have a familiarity with the game. However, there will be new things for me, and I guess I'll be just as genuinely surprised about certain things as you will be. Oh no, they hurt me, and I can't attack them. I can't go there, so... As you can see, uh, above, uh, left of center, in the top, there's a uh, sort of mini-map. Basically, it's um, grid-based and um, box-based levels, so each zone is marked by a box, and it'll show you when you discover new ones and when you're traveling from one to the other. Uh, clearly, we just opened that gate, so let's go through here and see what's up. Ah, a chest that's not gated, so we can open this by pressing C. So sweeping uh, with our broom, I found seems to be our basic method of attack currently. So that's how we kill things. And any of the red gems that we pick up, such as these, um, I mean, that's the closest thing I can call them are gems, are uh, health bars. So you can see the health bar up in the top right. Um, but other than that, it's clearly straightforward. And I know you're all smart people, especially since you're gamers. So we shouldn't have any issues there. Now sometimes, all it takes to open gates, as you saw before, was stepping on the little rocks. Uh, but sometimes it requires either gathering keys, which we don't have yet, and or killing all creatures within the uh, zone. And speak of the devil, I actually did not remember this happened. Uh, opening that one gave us our first key. And keys are obviously what opens any paths or gates where you see the little lock like that. So you just walk through it and it moves us on. And I'm guessing this one we have to kill that little goo creature to get to the next part. Creepy. Don't even want to know what that is about. Because nothing more fun than walking under a creepy overpass. Huh. So we just got transported. Uh, I'm not sure where just yet. Wonder if I should have gone straight first. That's the nice thing about this game. There's multiple different things you can do at once. Um, ah, meeting somebody. I always thought he crashed the bike there when that happened. Yep, oh he did. And yes, I know, the game is a little cheesy, but it's fun. And I always hate that sound. It's like creepy and I'm not sure what's going to happen. Well, at least I have full health. I guess that's a plus. Okay, so this gate has a number four on it. Um, that means... I need four playing cards throughout the game to open that. Well, I don't even have one yet, so that's going to have to be something I work on. Can't get through that gate because I don't have a key for it, so I guess that's something we'll work on later as well. Ooh, a rock. I got a rock. He knows me way too well. Okay. 
Another chest. All right, gotta be facing. Hey, we got our first card. All right. And so if you have a desire to look at what cards you get, you can go to here and go to your cards. Oh, oops. That's creepy. I've actually never pressed on one of them. And they say things like that. Okay. Well then. <laughs> uh, so we can't go this. We can't go uh, up anymore. So I guess we'll go to the right. I love how the sage always shows up where I need to be. Why can't he just defeat the darkness? Oh, right, then there'd be no video game. Okay, I think he said everything he's going to say. Alright, so we saved it. Ah. Right. So, this is a portal... And the portal leads us back into this place where the sage is. So, yeah. Let's go back to this first part. I want to go north. Uh, interesting fact I'm going to point out. The little red gem that's lit above each portal entrance indicates that everything was completed within that uh, area or zone or level. And there's really nothing else you need to get from there. I found this out after a few hours into the game when I was trying to figure out, do I need to go here still, or do I not need to go here? So, that's a good little heads up. Um, figure that might be of use to somebody. Not that it really matters, I mean, you can easily figure it out, obviously, without having that knowledge uh, prior to, like, getting farther into the game, but... Oh, never mind, I can't go... Okay, that literally is everything. Oh, right, and dust is apparently one of the greatest things in this entire game. So... Now that we're back here, let me see what I can find up this way. Okay, there's nothing. I also like to get as much explored as possible so that I know what could possibly happen. Oh, also, not all the creatures you kill are guaranteed to give you health, so... Just be wary of that. Uh, don't necessarily let yourself get uh, attacked, just assuming that you'll be fine. Okay, we'll save again. Um, we'll explore this way for a little bit. So we just went through the portal. Okay, we can't go through the trees anywhere in this way. So I guess we'll go down. Creepy dude, okay. Okay, but can't go this way. So the only way we can go through right now, I guess, is through the dark, creepy tunnel into whatever this is. Mountain, cave, thing. So laser things coming out of the wall and creepy eyes. Okay, so basically to let you know, the, uh, the dark holes you will fall through. If you uh, stand on the ones that are semi-perforated with blackness, they will eventually cave in completely, and you'll fall through. So, just also letting you know that. Those things you can only kill through the head, it looks like. Because I noticed when trying to kill them before, uh, also when you uh, leave a zone and come back into it, the creatures will respawn. So, if I were to attack it from the side here, it only pushes it. So yeah, the only way to kill it is actually hitting the, uh, the red dot on its head. Um, don't need to pick 
those dust, so I guess I'll just walk through. Okay, that makes a whole lot of sense. Uh, I'll pick up that dust. Huh, okay, cool. It's weird that these things aren't moving. Hopefully one of these gates will open when I kill them all. Oh, okay, all of them. Didn't remember the, all of them opening. Ah, I bet I can... Oh, damn. Okay. It just did the work for me. That works. Let's go down, shall we? Alright, I bet this is gonna... Yep. Okay, got another key. Cool. You don't have to kill everything each time if you don't really need to get there or anything. There's really no point. Just run through it if possible. Okay. So there's two buttons, and when they're both stood on, it'll open the gate. That's where creatures also come in handy. I'm betting I can pick up this one. And then pick up a previous one. Obviously, these first like first few levels and zones are easy. Uh, things get a lot harder as you keep going, though. Trust me. Oh, and once gates are open, they're open uh, permanently. So that part's good. Oh crap! And that's what happens when you lose all your life and die. I end up starting back at the save point. Luckily, I did just open that gate, so literally nothing really happens to me. Um, that's not doing anything, so... Oh, crap. Okay, guess I'll go through this way. Not that I need to put it there, but I mean, I can, so... Damn, I'm letting myself get hit way too much. Okay. Wow. Okay, another card, sweet. Oh, come on, really? Picked up the wrong one. Well, it's okay. It brings me back to here, and I don't have to walk all the way back. And I already have another key. But I wonder if killing both of these things will let me through. Yes! Okay, let's go down first. that I have, yes. Alright, I'm gonna press C. Oh, I guess these don't say anything different. Wow, that was very cheesy. So I guess the only way to go is... up. Basically with bats, just let them start flying around you and then hit them and usually you're good to go. 